Now I need to forewarn you that the first part of this sermon is a congregational response part of the sermon, so you're going to need to be alert here. I'm going to, I'm going to say uh, the first half of a phrase or a saying, and I want you to tell me what the last part of it is. Ready? In the Valley of the Jolly, ho, 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 green giant, yes. Go ahead. Thanks, Clint. How do I love thee? Ask not what your country can do for you. Read my lips. No new taxes. Well, let's try this one. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. the world and those who dwell therein. This one might be a little easier. It's the psalm ahead of it. The Lord is my shepherd. A mighty fortress is our God. A bulwark never failing. You know, we know lots of things by heart. We know movie lines and we know commercials. We know popular songs and nursery rhymes. When we're growing up in elementary school, we're taught the Gettysburg Address. Uh, we know love poems. Um, it's interesting that we say we know these things by heart. We don't say we remember these things. We say we know them by heart. They're inside of us. Um, down through history, the heart has been seen as the seat of our emotional life. We talk about things being heartfelt. It also has been seen as the seat of our soul. It's where we're at. So we say we know these things by heart. They're inside of us. They're a part of who we are. And I worry that we're becoming a people who do know movie lines and commercials, but may know nothing else by heart other than our word. When I was growing up, it was common in Sunday school and church to have lots of memorization of scripture. And I know that that uh, fell out of favor, but I'm very grateful that I grew up in that kind of environment because those scriptures that I remembered are now inside of me, and I carry them wherever I go, and they're available to me whenever I need them, and I don't even need Google to find them. They're available to me. And likewise, likewise with hymns. Um, some have said that it wasn't John Wesley's preaching that produced a revival in England. It was Charles Wesley's hymns. Because even illiterate people who couldn't read the scriptures for themselves knew the hymns of Charles Wesley and they'd be singing them on their way to the coal mines. Hymns that are inside of us, we know by heart. I have a pastor friend who has a passage that she particularly likes, and she says that she has the verse tattooed on the inside of her eyelids so that she sees it even when her eyes are closed. That's knowing something by heart. I think we need to know important things by heart. And the covenant that is described in this passage from Jeremiah describes a covenant that is written on our hearts. It's inside of us. It's not something that is a reference book. It's within us. I find it interesting when I read Jesus' instruction on the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus says, I've not come to abolish the law. I've come to fulfill the law. And in every one of his instructions, he goes beyond following a rule to what's in the human heart. Jesus says, you've heard it said of old, thou shalt not murder. I say to you, don't be angry. Murder grows out of our anger. And he says that this inward anger is so dangerous and so important to deal with that if you're involved in a serious religious obligation, if you're standing in front of the altar bringing your offering and you remember that you have something against someone else. You should leave your offering there and go be reconciled to that person before you come and make your offering. That's how important it is to get our hearts right. Jesus said, 
you've heard it said of old that you ought to tell the truth when you take an oath. In other words, don't commit perjury. But I say to you, always speak the truth. In other words, we ought to have honest hearts. As Lucy Ricardo found out, it's a lot easier if you just tell the truth all the time. Jesus wanted us to have honest hearts. And as the matter of adultery, Jesus moves back to the motivation that's in the human heart, the issue of lust. And then the issue of revenge, you know, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, Jesus says that's the moment to stop and turn our hearts toward peacemaking. And as for praying and giving alms, some people do it on the street corner so that others see them and they get the human uh, adoration of others. Jesus says, if you really are doing this from your heart, do it in secret. Make it a matter between you and God. Jesus always moved back to the motivations within the human heart. How is it? How is it that we get that covenant inside our heart? Well, I think one of the things that we do, John Wesley understood, one of the things we do to get that covenant inside our heart is that um, we observe what he called in his antique 18th century language the ordinances of God. That is to say, attend worship, a place where you're going to sing those hymns and get them inside of you, a place where you're going to hear the scriptures and get it inside of you, a place where you're going to begin to think about things from God's perspective. And um, prayer every day is important. You know the little card that you got at the beginning of Lent? Those include the ordinances of God to attend worship weekly, to read scripture and pray daily. This is the way that we begin to get things inside of us. Advertisers know that repetition is the key to getting something inside somebody. How many times do you think we heard in the Valley of the Jolly Ho 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 Green Giant before we could become responsive to that? We're much less diligent about getting spiritual things inside of us than we are about letting commercial enterprises get things inside of us. We need to know things by heart. This passage says something else interesting too. It says, with this new covenant, they shall know the Lord. Now I am interested in the paraphrase that Eugene Peterson has in his uh, book, The Message. He says, they will no longer go around setting up schools to teach each other about God. They will know me firsthand. They will know me firsthand. Now, you know, it's a very different thing to know something about somebody it is to know the person. Uh, most of us have an interest in people who are famous and we read biographies about them. And so we know something about them, but we do not know the person. How do you get to know a person? Well, you interact with them. You know a person by talking with them. You know a person by spending time with them. And if we are to know the Lord, we have to do more than just sit around and talk about God or discuss what we believe about God. We have to have a relationship which involves a lot of time in prayer. Now I have a challenge for you. Think about your own life. And uh, if you were going to ask yourself, is this covenant written in my heart? Here's a test for yourself. I discover that when people are under stress, they tend to fall back into the patterns that are most meaningful to them. Uh, for example, um, parents, no matter what they say out loud, revert to the child-rearing practices of their parents when they're under stress. I've seen that over and over and over again. And so ask yourself, when you are under stress, what do you do? How do you cope? Do you revert to some escapist mechanism like crawling inside a bottle or sleeping 20 hours a day? Or do you recall what is deep within your heart and seek not just solace, but direction and peace 
and hope. You know, a week from Thursday, we're going to be um, having Holy Communion at Monday Thursday service. And in that service, as always during communion, we will hear the words of Jesus who talks about this is the cup of the new covenant. The new covenant is embodied in Jesus. Jesus looked not just at the actions of people, but he looked at the human heart. And if we want to know more, if we want to know God and not just know about God, Jesus has the directions for us in John 14. If you know me, you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. Is that covenant inscribed on your heart? Listen again to the words of scriptures. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. This is the covenant that I will make with the house after those days. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more.